In this video, I'm going to teach you how to increase your Amazon sales in 30 days. I'll take you through how to select the right license, how to optimize your ads, how to improve your listing content, and how to launch in new marketplaces to boost your revenue. I've tested all of this out on the accounts of seven, eight, and nine figure Amazon sellers, so this is all proven to work. Now, let's go into each strategy and break it down step by step so you can implement it into your own account. The first step of growing your Amazon sales is choosing the right license to put your money behind. To do this, I usually start by creating a spreadsheet which contains all of my advertising and business report data for all of my products. Then I go through it one by one and select the right ASINs to invest my money in. Over here in this spreadsheet, you can see the different metrics that I'm looking at. This is all for the last trading 30 days. So over here, I have a column for all of my ASINs. Then I have revenue for last 30 days. I have ad spend. I have tackles. I have margin. This is before ads. So this is after everything and before ads. Uh, then I have net profit, which is after ads. Then I have sales contribution, which is this ASIN sales as a percentage of the account's total sales, which I have right here. Then we have spend contribution, which is the same thing for spend. I have total spend over here. Then I have on hand inventory, which is the value of the inventory I'm keeping right now. Uh, then my uh, rating. After that, I also keep average tackles for the account. So what I want to do here is pick out ASINs where I have a good margin, both net and gross gross meaning before Amazon ads, where I have a good sales contribution and a good spend contribution as a ratio of sales contribution. And I also have enough on-hand inventory to cover my growth trends. So what I'd start by doing is looking at ASINs where I have a good net profit margin after ads. So right now, this product has a 2.5% net profit margin after ads, which means if I were to invest anything else into this product, I'd probably start losing money because there's not that much room to scale over here. So what I want to do is start by filtering out any products below a certain net margin. For this account, I choose to filter out anything under 5%, which filters out all low uh, net profit and no net profit products. And I only want to focus on anything above 10% net profit, because that gives me enough room to scale. So you can go over here, you can just say greater than 10%. You can put that in. Now we just filtered anything that's low profit or no profit. Then the next thing you want to look at are ASINs where your spend contribution is higher than your sales contribution. So you're spending more as a percentage of the account's total budget than you're selling. So these ASINs are less efficient on average than the rest of the account. So I've just highlighted these in blue. And these are ASINs I don't want to focus on because I know as I try to scale this up, I'll start losing more money because these aren't super efficient. So this is something I don't want to invest more money in. And then I'm just stuffed with the remaining ASINs. For the remaining ASINs, you want to judge them based on sales contribution, on-hand inventory, ratings, uh, and ad spend, right? And also tackles, of course. So over here, this one is a high sales contribution product. This is selling 14% of our total uh, revenue. So this means if I were to increase this like 20%, that means I'd increase the whole account by 3%. Whereas if I was to increase one of these smaller ASINs by 20%, the whole account wouldn't see that big of a change. So I want to focus on these bigger ASINs because of the 80-20 rule. So this is excluded because the ratio here isn't good. So I'd probably be looking at this one. I'd be looking at this one, this one, maybe the um, few others after them. And then after that, I'd start looking at the on-hand inventory, right? So over here, if I want to increase my sales by, let's say, $300,000 over the next quarter, and I know my lead time is a few months long, I can't choose to focus on a product where I'm going to run out of stock if I scale up on advertising. So over here, this has good on-hand inventory. This has $258,000 in on-hand inventory. This has $120,000. So these have room to scale. Some of the others over here, like this only has $11,000 in on-hand inventory. So if I were to run more ads to this and I grew the product, let's say 20%, uh, I'd run out of inventory within the next month, probably. Right? Even if I were to get replenishments, I'd probably run out of inventory. So you want to focus on products with decent inventory. And then the last thing you want to look at is ratings. Ratings aren't super important if you have statistically significant data, because if you already have a good margin, good sales contribution, um, good ratio of sales to spend contribution, and good inventory, then the rating doesn't tell you that much. I'd only really care about trading if this was a newer account or a newer product, 
uh, because at that point, rating would be a measurement of how well this product could do. This is probably the last thing I'd look at. Uh, after I look at all of the other factors I mentioned before that, though, I'd pick out like five or six ASINs, depending on the size of the account, and I'd put them on a separate sheet. You can just create a sheet here and put these ASINs. Let me just pick out a few of these. These are all fake ASINs, so it doesn't really matter what I pick out. Let's just pretend pick out like a couple. Right, and I'll just put these here. And then generally what I want to do is I'll go to Amazon and I'll find the competitor. Let's assume this ASIN was a spatula. So I'd find the actual competitor for it. And I'd take the ASIN for this and I'd drop it in Helium 10. Right? And I'd see how much it's selling. You could use Helium 10, Jungle Scout, uh, Rainforest, any of the other sales predictor tools. And you can see how much it's selling. And generally what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll compare it to the ASINs that I picked out. So for example, if this one's adding $375,000 a month worth of product, and that other ASIN I found, which I assume is the top selling one uh, in this category, is only selling like 5% more, then I probably know that there's not that much room to scale, right? So I'll probably go over here, and I'll just see like, this is the overall pick. This has 8,000 reviews, for example. This is something I want to check revenue for. Uh, this has... Um, 7,000 reviews, popular brand pick, I check revenue for this. This has 10,000 reviews, again, I'd probably check revenue for this. And if I can find examples of competing products with significantly more revenue than what I'm doing, then I'm generally not going to pursue that ASIN, right? Because I know even if I were to scale up, the next best person or even the best person in the category is only doing 10% more than me. I know there's probably not that much room to improve. So I probably look at the next ASIN at that point and try to find something where my top competitor is selling at least like 50, 60, 100%, 200% more than I am. Because I know at that point, the category is big enough for me to sell more product and still be profitable. Because you could always sell more product, but if it's super competitive and the category isn't that big and the overall market size isn't super big, the incremental revenue gain that you're going to get is going to be very, very expensive to get. So I'd probably focus on things where I find competitors that are selling a lot more than I am, because I know at that point there's room to scale. Okay, so the next strategy I like to use is called keyword expansion, which essentially means adding more keywords or the same keywords and more match types to increase your visibility and your keyword surface area. We have a couple of strategies for doing this. The first one is called keyword harvesting. So over here, what I do is I go into campaign manager and I go into measurement and reporting. Right, then you just want to open sponsored ads reports. You're just going to create a search term report for a sponsored product. Right, just add your date in. Just select run report and create it. I already have mine ready. And it's open over here in a Google Doc. And it's going to go in and we're going to look for search terms that we haven't added as keywords yet, but are producing sales. Right, so anything that's produced sales either from a broad campaign, a phrase campaign, an auto campaign, whatever else it is, anything that's reduced sales and we haven't used yet as a keyword, we want to add in. We're just going to add filters to everything. You're going to go in and you're going to filter for sales above zero. Right? You're going to get, uh, you're going to get a bunch of search terms that sold. And you want to filter out exact, because these are keywords ready you have. And you're left with broad phrase and auto. Right, so you're going to go in. And then the next thing you're going to do is just look through the search terms that you have. Over here, I just named them search term. This is like a fake search term uh, report. But what you do generally is you take this and you would go into targeting tab on Amazon and you'd cross check to make sure that you don't already have them. And if you don't have them, you'd go back into the campaign you got them from or into a separate campaign if it's an auto and you'd add them back as keywords. So you'd find out from the campaign name or the ad group name what product this was advertising, then you'd add that back into the same ad group in the same match type if it's broad or phrase. Then you can also add it into like exact or broad or phrase, whatever other match type you want. And if it's auto, again, you're just going to take that out and find manual campaigns or create manual campaigns for that same product. And then you're going to add those in as keywords over there. So this is the first way to increase your keyword surface area. After that, uh, we also use brand analytics. So generally what I do is I go into search query performance report, right? And you just go into ASIN view and you select the product you want to check. I do quarterly for the reporting range. I select 2023 quarter four and I just apply. You just want to select the latest quarter 
uh, and it gives you all of the main search terms that people are using to buy your product. And the nice thing about this is you can actually tell what your share of impressions, clicks, and sales are for your product. So this tells you a few things. Number one, it tells you what your conversion rate is compared to everyone else. So if you're getting, for example, over here, 1.4% of clicks, but we're also getting at the same time 3% of sales, that means we're converting at twice the rate of everyone else because with half the clicks, we're able to produce the same amount of sales as someone else. So this is something you want to put more money behind because you know you have an advantage on this keyword. You can go through this process for every other search term that you find here. This is 13% ASIN share, 17% ASIN share for the purchases. So again, this is another search term where we're performing very well, right? And you can check volumes over here. So you can check search query volumes. This is huge. This is 157,000, right? We're converting at twice the rate of everyone else. And we're only getting 1.5% of clicks. You're never going to get 100%. 10, 15, 20% is like amazing, especially if it's a massive keyword like this one. But this is definitely something that we could invest more money in. Now, obviously, once we start spending on this, since we're performing so well in terms of conversion rate, we can even start to rank organically. So this brings in even more revenue. So you just want to go through this uh, process for every ASIN that you selected from our previous strategy. So the main ASINs that you found that you're going to focus on to increase your sales, you just put them into the ASIN view of the search query performance report. And you go in and you find the high volume search terms where you have a conversion advantage, or even if you're matching everyone else's conversion rate, that's fine. And then you're going to go back and add those into your campaigns if they're not there already as keywords, because you could just be showing up for those organically or as search terms on broad phrase or auto. So you're going to go back and you're going to add them in as keywords. And if they're already in there as keywords, you can increase the bits to get more money spent on them. Uh, you can put them in their own separate campaigns and assign a larger budget to them. So you can do whatever you want to increase spend on those keywords. Because once you scale those up, if you maintain that conversion advantage and even improve it, because you could start showing up for a top of search, for example, uh, you're going to get more sales. So this is another strategy I like to use. The final strategy is to go to Amazon and just find a couple products that are similar to yours. So over here, if I was selling like a candle, a uh, lavender candle, I just go and I'd search up lavender candle and I'd pick out a couple candles that are similar to my product and are doing pretty well. So anything that's ranking at the top here organically, that's similar to what I sell in terms of like form, function, price, everything else. Uh, I'd pick out and then I'd go into Helium Tenagon and I'd add a couple of products in uh, to Cerebro, which is their reverse ASIN keyword research tool. So I'd add those in and I just click get keywords. I'd usually add in more than two. So you could do up to uh, eight product identifiers. I'd usually add at least five. And then I'd go into the filtering section and I do competitor rank average. This basically is a filter for where they're ranked organically. So the higher your competitors ranked organically, the more relevant those keywords are going to be because generally you're going to get two, three, four thousand keywords for each product that you add. Uh, some of them are going to be duplicates between each product. So they're not going to show up in that quantity once you have each um, ASIN from like a few competitors added in. So generally you're going to end up with a few thousand at least. After filtering, I have 776. Before filtering, I was looking at almost 8,000 keywords. Uh, so you want to filter these down so you don't waste your time going through each and every one. So the first filter I do is competitor rank average. I just want to do anywhere from 1 to 30. Over here, this type of product has a lot of keywords anyway, so I wanted to filter down some more. So I did 1 to 24. So it's just going to depend on the product and the category you're in. If it's like a super big category, and there are a lot of different products and different search terms out there. I just want to filter it down even more. So I could do 1 to 20, 1 to 25, 1 to 24, as I've done over here. If you have less options in terms of search terms and keywords, I just do 1 to 30. Um, then the second thing I want to do is exclude phrases containing, right? So I'm going to exclude brand names because I keep those separate. So I exclude my own brand name. And I exclude my competitors' most popular brand names, right? So if I'm going up against someone who's selling diapers, I could exclude like Pampers, for example, right? So you just want to exclude your competitors' names. Then you hit apply filters and you run the search. You get keywords and you run the search. And for these, you're just going to go through these, right? And you can even have like a search volume filter. So you could do search volume above 200. Again, if you're in a bigger category and you have a lot of options for keywords, 
So you can add a few more keywords depending on what you want. And then this just filters it down to usually between 100 to 300 keywords. If it's a bigger product, you could have several thousand keywords or almost 800 like we have over here. And then generally I just export these and I pretty much filter anything out that I don't think is relevant. And then I'd filter out anything I'm already using and I then just add everything else into my campaigns. Right? So this is another good strategy and I do this for every product that we manage. And this has grown sales every time, especially when we're able to find a lot of keywords that we're not already using. Uh, after that, we also have what I call match type expansion. Let me just remove these filters over here. Right? Generally what I do is I would go in, I'd add an active status filter. So target active status enabled. And then I do campaign active status also enabled. And then I'll start filtering by what they call targeting type, which is actually just match type, right? And what you can do here is you can select the specific match type that you want to see. And then you can see the number of keywords in there. So over here, exact. Amazon's glitched out right now, so they're not showing any data for the targeting tab. But I'd be able to say exact, for example, and I'd see the total number of keywords over here. And then I do the same for phrase. I can see a total number of keywords over here. And then for broad, and I'd see a total number of keywords. And if there's an imbalance in the number of keywords between each match type, generally what I do is I compare those keywords. And if I find that some of those keywords that exist in one match type and are performing well aren't in another match type, I'll just take it and put it in the other match type too. And you want to do this on an ASIN level, of course, so that your data isn't, um, isn't mixed up. So you can just filter by campaigns and ad groups. And then if you have your campaigns named properly, you can just search for your ASIN code over here. I like to include that in the campaign name. So your ASIN code or like your product identifier, some people just use like many product titles and their campaign names. So you just search it up. Then you quickly add all of these campaigns and then you'd also only filter exact phrase and broad within those campaigns. So you can have everything organized by ASIN. And then I just export each um, group of campaigns for every ASIN separately. So I'd export exact separately, broad separately, phrase separately. And I look at all of them in an Excel sheet. And again, if I find anything that's performed on, uh, I'm just going to go and I'm going to move those into the other match types too. And the thing is, you can go back to lifetime over here. So even if some of the uh, keywords you find in one match type are in super high volume, you can go back into lifetime and see if they've ever performed since you've put them into the actual campaigns that you're running. So this is another good trick. And this again has increased sales for us time and time again. Uh, so to summarize, you have harvesting, you have search query performance report, you have Cerebro or reverse ASIN or any type of keyword research you want to use. Uh, then you also have match type expansion. I run every single one of these for every ASIN I'm focusing on and it's increased sales every time. Okay, so the next strategy I'm gonna show you is called add type expansion. And it's very, very similar to what we just did with match types. Essentially, what you're going to want to do is go into Campaign Manager on Amazon and search for the product identifier that you use, whether it's ASIN code or like a shortened title. I just put mine in over here. You're going to have all of the campaigns for this product show up. And then you're just going to filter by active status. You want enabled. Right. And then after that, you want to filter by ad type. Right. So you want to go in. And you want to select the ad type filter, which is this one. And you have a few uh, options. You have sponsored product, brand, and display. I'm going to start with sponsored product. And then I generally take all of these and I export them. Then I'll do the same with sponsored brand. And I'll export them. And also the same with display. I'll export them. Right. Then I'm going to go into targeting tab. And I'm going to add the active status filters again. Then I'm going to go back. I'll add the uh, campaign and ad group filter. And then I'll add the campaigns and ad groups for each ad type separately for the ASIN we just checked. I'm going to go and I'll add those. Let's assume it's these. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Apply. All right. I got no data. Amazon's glitched out, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll have those. And then what I'll do is I'll export the targets for each ad type separately and I'll put those on an Excel sheet and then I'll compare, right? I'll see number one, how many targets do I have in each ad type? Number two, do I have anything that's performing well in one ad type that's not in the other ad type? So if I have an ASIN target that does very well for a sponsored product, is it in sponsored display? If I have a 
keyword that's doing very well in sponsored brand? Am I adding that back into sponsored product? And so on. So I'll check all of the different targets in each one. And I'll make sure that anything that's working well in one uh, ad type is also added into the other ad type. That's the first thing I want to do. Then the second thing is generally, uh, I'll just go back into this step and I'll check all of my ad types again after doing the targeting stuff. And I'll just check my performance on them. So over here, we spent 1500 on sponsored product, 29% ACOS. Let me check sponsored brand. Right, sponsored bands doing a bit better at 26% ACOS, only $300 spent. So at that point, I'm gonna go and see how many sponsored band campaigns I have set up. Oh, it's only four, right? And I have how many sponsored products set up? Oh, it's 13, right? So I know for sure there are a bunch of keywords in sponsored product that aren't in sponsored band right now. And it seems like I'm actually performing better on sponsored band. So I'm gonna go and recreate some of these sponsored campaigns into sponsored band. I'm gonna keep running both. Like it's not like I'm going to pass sponsored product because sponsored product is still king. I'll run both and I'll add some extra spend that way, right? And then, for example, I could go in here and I could see that I'm not running any sponsored this way at all. So I could say like, hey, I could start running some CPC campaigns or sponsored this way using the ASIN targets that I have in sponsored product that I've already seen work well, right? So this is kind of the logic of ad type expansion. It's more difficult to explain but basically you just want to go in and you want to compare performance for each ad type, right? See how you're performing on each one. Uh, if something's doing very well, you want to spend more money on it. And this could be by creating campaigns, adding new keywords, testing different match types and so on. And if something's doing bad, you could remove the budget from that and reallocate it to the other ad types that are doing well. So in this example, we found out that we are spending a lot more on sponsored product and sponsored band which is fine and it's always going to be the case just because there are more sponsored product placements. Um, but we also found that we don't really have that many campaigns set up for sponsored brand. So we only have four set up, which probably means a bunch of the keywords from sponsored product aren't there. So after that, we'd go into targeting tab and we figure out what those keywords are, export the list for each ad type separately, compare those targets. And then if we find out that there are targets in sponsored product that aren't in sponsored brand, at that point, I could very easily go in and just add them again into sponsored band, into existing or new campaigns, and start spending like 500, 600 a month on sponsored band at that 26% ACoS, or maybe a bit higher, maybe a bit lower, depending on how those new campaigns perform. But I could spend more money there and increase my sales since it's already performing well. And since I already have keywords that are pretty much proven to work from my other ad types that I could just pull out and put into sponsored band. Right? Again, another action item I could do here is hey, I'm not running any sponsored display at all. Let me create a couple campaigns. Let me do like a retargeting campaign, an ASIN targeting campaign, uh, audience targeting campaign, whatever else it is. And I could add some extra spend, maybe like another 5% of spend doing that. Right? So this is the essence of ad type expansion. It's expanding into ad types at work and duplicating any targets in like both match types and just unique targets between the ad types, depending on performance, to increase your spending and your sales. Another strategy we usually implement is expanding into other countries slash marketplaces and going cross channel. So what I'd usually do is if someone's selling in the US only, I could relaunch their product in Amazon Canada and Amazon UK using pretty much the same keywords and the same listing content since it's the same language, the same buying patterns that could add another 10% of sales, right? After that, you have some countries in Europe, like Germany, you could add Spain, you could add Italy, you could add France. You could go into Latin America, you could add Mexico and Brazil, those do pretty well. So if you add all other marketplaces, at least the main ones, like the main ones in Europe, plus Canada, and maybe some in Latin America, generally I've seen sales go up like 10 to 30% at pretty much the same ACoS for most accounts that we've done this for. So if you feel like you're at the limit for what you could do on Amazon US or whatever marketplace you're in, you could start looking at other countries. And this is especially true if you're not a US-based seller. So if you're selling mostly on Amazon UK, then obviously the easiest way to grow your sales would be to launch in other countries because the Amazon UK market isn't that big. And there are other bigger platforms out there, which is like one of your pretty much closest hanging fruit or lowest hanging fruit to growing your sales. You could just relaunch that same product into the US. You got to keep the same campaigns you could use the same reviews from the UK, the same listing content. You just copy paste it into the US and all of a sudden you have a market that's like 10, 20 times bigger. 
So depending on what country you're in, this could increase like your revenue 10%, 20%. And that's mostly if you're from the US going outside. And if you're outside the US and you're selling in Europe, expanding outside could double, triple, quadruple revenue. So if you're in Italy only, expanding to the other European countries like Germany, you know, Spain, France, and the UK alone could triple revenue. Expanding into the US after that, again, could double revenue after the tripling of the revenue that has already happened. So depending on where you're at, this could be a huge needle mover for you. If you're ready in the US, launch all of this, get that extra 20% of revenue. Then you could also look at some other marketplaces to launch it. So you can look at Walmart, for example, that I've seen usually add another 10% of revenue. Depending on what you sell, you could do Instacart, you could do Target and so on. So generally, I recommend people to go cross marketplace as soon as they feel like their growth on Amazon US or whatever Amazon they're on is starting to slow down. And generally, again, you're going to unlock more revenue at a very similar ACoS. And it's not that much effort, especially if you're expanding into countries where you guys are pretty much using the same language that you're using. And if you're in Amazon US, that's the UK and Canada. And it's super easy to do. So this is another strategy that I implement for most of our accounts. Another thing we like to test is A-B testing main images to try to increase our click-through rate, which then increases our sales. So the math behind this is pretty simple. If you're getting 100,000 impressions per month at a 0.3% click-through rate, you're going to get 300 clicks. If you have a 10% conversion rate on those clicks, you'll sell 30 units. Now, if you get the same number of impressions with a 0.6% click-through rate, you'll get 600 clicks and double your traffic and your sales. So how do I actually increase my click-through rate? Well, the actual process behind this is simple. I want to test different colors, different positioning, different elements in my image and different layouts to try to grab the actual shopper's attention and stand out from the other products in the SERP. So over here in this example, uh, you can see a bunch of spray bottles side by side. All of them seem to be facing the left besides that one in the middle. It's facing the right. All of them seem to be different shades of white, blue and gray all similar in tone and color. Then we have this one that's super bright orange and has a black spray head, which again makes it stand out. And if you go in and you look at reviews, you'll see it's at 118,000 reviews, which is higher than most of the options on this page. You have another one at 110,000, which is comparable. But other than that, it's a lot higher than the three other options. So you're most likely going to click on this one. Same goes for the different size variation of this product. If you look at all the other ones showing up next to it in the SERP, all of them are white. All of them look the same. All of them look super like basic. None of the um, like colors that we saw in this actual product are present in any of the other ones. They're all white. They all have very basic packaging that doesn't stand out. And they're all using similar like sized and shaped bottles. This one, again, has a super unique shape, um, like packaging. Like the actual packaging for this looks nothing like the packaging for the other similar size bottle over there. Again, it's bright orange and it has that black cap, which isn't similar to anything else we see on the SERP. And it's also taking up more space than anything else. And once you combine that again with the price being lower than the other similar size bottle and the reviews being higher, people are more likely to click on this one. So this product could spend the same amount on ads, right? Or show up for the same organic placements and it's gonna end up selling a lot more than you just because it has a better click-through rate. All right, so that's pretty much it for all six strategies. Every single one of these has been tested out and proven to work. If you need help implementing any of this, we can handle it all ourselves. So you can just visit our website, aihello.com, see the type of work we do and book a call. Either I'll show up personally or someone else from my company will, and we'll be happy to help you set all of this up for your account. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys again next week.